Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, in a previous project, quite a while ago, um, I extracted silicon from old computer chips, and it's a pretty good method to get really high purity silicon, but you don't get very much of it, and you're not going to get enough to use in most chemistry um, when you're requiring larger amounts. So, today we're going to be exploring a different method. Now, I have tried to extract silicon from sand before, as sand is mostly silicon dioxide, but I didn't have very good results because the silicon just doesn't clump together because the reaction isn't hot enough to melt into a solid chunk, so you get very finely powdered silicon, and it's, it's rather hard to uh, remove it all and get a good purity from the sand. So today we're going to be trying something totally different, and this is going to be with this um, silica gel. Now, I've been saving this from different... Um, uh, desiccant things required in different things. This is particular mostly from seaweed. You can buy seaweed in packs and they almost always contain silica gel. You can find this on all sorts of stuff. So I'm going to be opening all of this and silica gel is silicon dioxide and we'll be powdering it in this blender as soon as I clean it out. Um, so uh, the one other uh, uh, thing that um, we have to do to this is actually dry it because silica gel is used to absorb water. So it's not going to be totally dry. We really do need it to be dry because we're going to be carrying out a thermite reaction. And uh, if we have high heat and water, we're going to generate a lot of steam and possibly an explosion, which wouldn't be good. So I'm going to open all this, powder it, and uh, then I'll get a baking sheet ready and we'll dry it in the oven. Um, so I'm going to go ahead, open all these and put them in here. I'll be back in a moment. Okay, so as soon as it's been powdered, we can move it into a baking pan or something, such as this one. And this is one that I've ded dedicated strictly for science. Your blender should also be one you've dedicated strictly for science. You can also use a m mortar and pestle or something, um, but I personally think it's crazy that people use a mortar and pestle because it flies everywhere with these silica gel beads. And a blender that you've dedicated to science is just way better. Anyhow, so once it's been powdered, I weighed it, and we have 70 grams here exactly. And um, so we'll be put put it in this baking pan and put it in the oven at like mm, 200 degrees Celsius or something for a good 10-15 minutes just to dry up all the water. And um, as soon as that's done, we'll transfer it um, into a jar or something, such as this jar right here. It's a canning jar, and stick a lid on top so that it can't absorb any more water. And um, at that point, we can get the other part of our reaction mixture ready, which is the aluminum powder. And I'll meet you back as soon as this has been done drying in the oven. Okay, so for this type of thermite reaction, the ideal ratio is um, for every 1 gram of silicon dioxide you have, you have 1.6 grams of aluminum powder. Now, we did make this in a separate video, so go check that out if you'd like to see how to make this nice fine aluminum powder here. And um, I just have this lid on here to stop water from getting into our pre-dried silicon dioxide. Now, typically, when people use beach sand or whatever, which is mostly silicon dioxide, they add sulfur into the mixture and some extra aluminum because the reaction of sulfur and aluminum to produce aluminum sulfide is very exothermic and helps drive forward the silicon dioxide and aluminum thermite reaction. However, because this is extremely pure silicon dioxide, I'm hoping we won't have to do that. So I'm going to go ahead, mix these two together really well, put them in a little um, tin can or something, and use a magnesium ribbon to set them on fire. However, if the thermite reaction does not progress forward and we don't actually get a thermite reaction, we may need to go ahead, add more aluminum powder and some um, sulfur, and that will definitely make this reaction work. So, to start off, we're just going to be mixing this 32 grams of aluminum powder with this 20 grams of silicon dioxide. And I didn't use all the silicon dioxide, um, only about half, just in case we needed more. And then we'll quickly cap that so that... Uh, it won't dry out or, any, or uh, absorb any water. And um, this can now be vigorously shaken to mix the two together very well. And then I'll put it in a tin can and meet you outside. Oh okay, wait, here we go. Well, it's still on fire, but there's no evident reaction. And it went out. Okay, we'll have to go back inside and put some sulfur in with that. Never mind, it is very clearly going, just at a very slow rate, so pure silicon dioxide will work as a thermite. My camera is just on the stand right now, so let me quickly undo this and bring it over so you can see better. 
Okay, let's go take a look at this. So it does take a moment to start, and you probably definitely need magnesium ribbon, but you could definitely see there's a thermite reaction happening right there. And um, I'm very happy with this. So clearly, pure silicon dioxide will work as a thermite reaction, but I don't know if this is hot enough to actually get any of the elemental silicon to conjugate into a singular blob. So I'll let this thermite reaction finish, and uh, be back when that's done. Okay, so about three minutes later, yes, three minutes, the thermite reaction is finally done. It took an extremely long time to propagate through that entire reaction mixture, which was 50 grams. With, if you added sulfur to this and a bit more aluminum, it will be gone really, really quickly, probably within 10 seconds. So, I don't really even know if we're going to actually be able to get any large chunks of silicon from this, but um, I might actually retry the reaction mixture with um, some sulfur in it. But first we'll take a look at what's inside of here. Now it's extremely hot right now, but um, after about 10 minutes when it's cool enough to not burn most things because it set the grass on fire, um, we'll be able to put it into this large steel bowl which you can see right here. And uh, sift through and see if we got any silicon that we can visibly see. Um, so I'll meet you back as soon as this is cooled down. Okay, so when the rea reaction was completed, we moved it into this separate jar here. Now, you can't see any evident chunks of pure silicon, but there's some very teeny chunks. If I zoom in, I don't know if you can see those little sparkly pieces. See the little sparkly pieces? You can see them shining as I move it in and out of the sun. And that is silicon metal. Um, and I'm very sure of this because of the beautiful refractive properties of it. So, well, now what we're going to do is, because we mostly have aluminum oxide and some unreacted stuff and silicon, we will be able to dissolve it in some hydrochloric acid. The hydrochloric acid should leave the silicon alone, dissolve the aluminum oxide and any unreacted aluminum, leaving us with just the silicon dioxide and then of course our beautiful silicon product. So we'll be slightly contaminated, but we will have silicon and we can melt this down into a bead. So I'm going to add this all to here, and the, the canning jar, and then add a bunch of hydrochloric acid. You can see the extremely reactive reaction which is happening, and this is going to heat up quite a bit. So in case your glass breaks or something, do stand back. This is borosilicate, so it shouldn't break, but just in case. And when the fizzing has died down, we can add some more hydrochloric acid until no more fizzing occurs. So I'll be back as soon as that's been done. Okay, so that actually didn't work so well. Um, I, I did realize I made a mistake. Um, instead of every one gram of um, silicon dioxide, you add uh, 1.6 grams of aluminum powder. It's actually the other way around. So I messed up on that, and the ratios might have made it so that our reaction mixture didn't work as well. But as you saw in that video, we clearly did make silicon metal. So um, I'm going to try this again, but this time we're going to add in our sulfur. Now when we do the sulfur ratio, it's 9 parts uh, silicon dioxide, 10 parts aluminum powder, and 12 parts sulfur. And this is the ideal ratio, um, and I double checked it this time, um, and this will hopefully produce some reasonable chunks of silicon metal which we can physically extract and then put in hydrochloric acid to dissolve off impurities. So this reaction will produce our silicon metal, aluminum oxide, but also aluminum sulfide, which is a very hot reaction will drive everything else forward. So we're going to be taking uh, everything and dumping it into this blender thing, which I've dedicated to science. This is just a magic bullet. I'm going to put it in a blender just to ensure that everything is really mixed, because this is my last amount of silicon dioxide. I really want to make sure it works. I have 22 grams of silicon dioxide here, 25 grams of aluminum powder, and 30 grams of sulfur. So we're going to mix this up really well in a blender, blend it all together, put it in a crucible, and really hope we get silicon metal, which is in large enough chunks to see this time. Because the sulfur, or the uh, um, hydrochloric acid just was not dissolving that aluminum oxide quick enough, and we would need way too much hydrochloric acid. Anyhow, so I'll meet you back as soon as this is mixed really well. Okay, so it's in ground up, put in another crucible, and I'm expecting this reaction to go much, much faster, be much, much hotter, and smell much, much worse, because we will be producing aluminum sulfide and possible sulfur dioxide gas, as the sulfur will also probably react with the oxygen in the air, um, and it will smell like sulfur. Now, sulfur dioxide is poisonous, so do be careful. Anyhow, I'll go light it now. And much more energetic as you can clearly see. The flames are about a foot high, sparks flying everywhere. It's quite nice. Zoom out a bit. 
and it, you can see it is propagating through the mixture much much faster you can see the red line moving down way way quicker than the other reaction mixture I'm really hoping we're gonna get some silicon metal this time anyhow so I guess I'll let the reaction finish off um, and then we'll be able to let it cool and see what happens and the reaction looks like it's just about done you can see it's glowing red hot okay I'll let it cool and we'll see what we got okay so this thing stayed hot for so long that I had to go babysitting before I could come back and it was cool enough to actually do anything with it and this is actually a very good sign uh, it's hard to see inside but it it got so hot it melted the aluminum oxide which has an extremely high melting point so I'm really hoping it was hot enough to actually melt that silicon um, into a blob or something so we're gonna go ahead and break this apart with a hammer um, just on its side and tap it a few times you can see it's now night anyhow so we'll be back as soon as I crumbled this up a bit okay so my camera just went out of focus, but we have much better results. As you can see, in this shot, there's beautiful silicon crystals in here. And they're laced throughout all of this rock here, near the bottom, of course. So, ah, uh, my dumb camera. Of course, it didn't get hot enough for it all to melt into one solid crystal, but it did get hot enough to um, bring it all to the bottom. So we have plenty of silicon here, all concentrated at the bottom. So now what I'm going to try to do is add these smaller chunks to hydrochloric acid and just see if we could get some actual silicon out of this. Because if we just smash it to bits with a hammer, we'll just be left with a powder. So I'm going to go ahead and attempt this and see if we can get any. If not, I'll just end up saving a chunk like this as a beautiful uh, thing. But um, I'm not going to change this to my element sample because it is much less pure than the silicon we extracted from those computer chips. That is plus 99.99% pure because that's be extremely pure for computer chip applications. Anyhow, besides the point, I'm going to go ahead and put one of these things into hydrochloric acid and see if we can get any little crystals out of them. Okay, so after letting it soak in hydrochloric acid, it, um, well, it reduced it to a powder, and I think it's pretty much elemental silicon, but, um, I'm not really interested in that. I'd rather have a large chunk. So, instead what I'm going to be doing is taking the rest of all that stuff, which, for some strange reason, uh, instead of becoming a solid chunk and staying like that, it actually disintegrated into a powder. Um, overnight. Anyhow, in the morning, uh, I was a powder, so I sc scooped it back up. And what I'm going to be doing with that is arc furnacing it. So that's just basically uh, putting it against an electrical arc, which is very, very, very hot. And this should hopefully melt it down, and the uh, silicon, I'm hoping, will sink to the bottom and form a nice little bead of silicon metal or something. If that works, that's excellent. If it doesn't, oh well. Anyhow, I am doing this uh, just really close to my shop because it is raining outside. Um, so anyhow, I'm going to go ahead, set up for the um, arc furnacing, and then I'll film that. Okay. Okay, here goes nothing. <laughs> Don't look at it. I'm just looking at it once in a while. Don't. It damages your, damages your eyes. It's really bad. Oh, Okay, so that worked pretty well. We got a little bit of silicon here. So it did ex definitely extract it. But um, if you can see in the distance, I wasn't able to melt a huge amount. Because what actually happened was the aluminum sulfide decomposed what I believed it happened. It, it decomposed into aluminum and sulfur, which reacted with the oxygen in the air, producing huge amounts of sulfur dioxide gas, which is super deadly. So um, I started breathing it in and very quickly realized it was a bad idea. So I only arc furnace for a short period of time. It only got this small bead, as you can see right there. Now, so clearly this does work, but what I would suggest doing in the future is um, reacting everything with water, because when you put this in water, the um, aluminum sulfide will decompose into hydrogen sulfide, I believe, uh, or possibly sulfur dioxide gas, um, and go off. Um, and it will be much safer to arc furnace. Anyhow, I don't think that this worked 
too well and not how I was hoping to, but I did find a couple other pieces of silicon as this had crumbled overnight. And I will show you those to you, but I put them in water and they kind of fell apart, so hopefully they're still kind of intact. So I'll be back in a moment. So here's one of the beads which I got from after it had kind of crumbled overnight. And you can see it's a fairly nice chunk of silicon there. And uh, there's the other bead I just dropped in, which we arc furnished. So um, we didn't get a huge amount of silicon, and there's still a huge amount left in that ash down there. But I would call this a success because we successfully synth synthesized silicon from sand. However, or not from sand, sorry, from silicon dioxide. And I will be trying to do a video where I take impure silicon dioxide from sand and purify it um, into sil pure silicon dioxide by first turning it into silicic acid. This is what one of my subscribers recommended, and I think it will work. Anyhow, so if you are to do this on your own, make sure, especially if you are furnace, that you have a gas mask, good for sulfur dioxide or hydrogen sulfide, um, and you also need a welding mask, of course. Now, I don't, I don't know. We, we did get some silicon, but um, perhaps you could find a different method to actually getting more silicon and a better yield or something, because lots of YouTubers get huge chunks of it. Anyhow, that's the best that I can do with this uh, thing, and we did make elemental silicon. But from now on, I'm just going to uh, continue extracting it from computer chips, because it's much easier to get way higher purity, and it's way cheaper and way less of a hassle. Anyhow, so I hope you guys enjoyed, and see you in the future. Okay, bye. Okay, so as a side note, you can see these beautiful silicon beads here. Now these are from the remnants of the thermite reaction, which I carefully sifted through with my hands until I found these little beads of silicon metal. And then I carefully picked them up with a needle nose plier, and you can see they're incredibly small. Um, but it's definitely worth getting them if you're going to try to get a huge amount. And um, it's going to take hours, um, and if you don't have computer chips, definitely try to get these. So clearly it is possible to make silicon from um, silicon dioxide, um, as I have demonstrated here. And um, anyhow, I really hope that there was a better way to get silicon out. I wish it was magnetic or something. Anyhow, I hope you enjoyed. Okay, bye.